Let the church say amen. amen. Let us pray. Father God in heaven, we thank you for this day, God. We thank you that your anointing is already in this place. Now, God, as I decrease, I pray that you may increase within me, God. I thank you right now for what will take place, oh God. And I give you glory and I give you honor in advance. It is in the mighty name of Jesus that I do pray. Thank you, Father, and amen. amen. If you would, please turn to your Bibles, Acts, the 16th chapter, beginning with the 23rd through the 31st verse. And it reads, And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bands were loose. In today's society, I think that it is safe to say that we have all found ourselves at some point between a rock and a hard place. The place where it isn't one thing, it's another. I mean, if it isn't your finances, then it's your kids. If it's not your kids, then the enemy has invaded your marriage. If it is not your marriage, then the enemy has attacked your body or you've found yourself with no peace, no joy, what seems to be a state of confusion, and to make matters worse, we turn on the television and every news station is confessing the same thing, that we are in a recession. Everywhere we look, people are losing their jobs and people have lost their homes or their homes are in foreclosure even as we speak. People are experiencing more month than money. Whatever the situation circumstance or deliver, dilemma is, it almost feels like we found ourselves locked up in a jail. It seems as though there is no way out. I don't know about you, but it seems as if we have already been found and proven guilty and have received our death sentence. We all know that prison signifies a, a place of confinement and bondage, and many of us here today or in prison, or dealing with some type of prison. We're singing on the praise team, but you are in prison. Preaching in the pulpit, but you are in prison. Serving on the deacon board, but you are in prison. Singing in the choir, but you are in prison. Serving, yet you are still confined and in bondage. Smiling, yet you are still confined and in bondage. Going on with our everyday routines, but yet we are confined and in bondage. Today I want you to know that your praise can shake some things loose. I don't care what it is that you're facing, you must know today that your deliverance is in your praise, your breakthrough is in your praise, your joy and your peace is in your praise. Today I would like to tag the text, it's in your praise. Acts the 16th chapter shows us that Paul and Silas had found themselves in Philippi, chief city in Macedonia, ruled by the Roman Empire. And the two men had been led there to go preach the gospel to the people in Philippi. During their stay, things appeared to be going smoothly. However, we know that any time that we're going to do the work of the Lord, that we're going to face some oppositions from Satan. He did just that with Paul and Silas by using a woman who was possessed by a demonic spirit. And this woman began to torment Paul and Silas as they went around proclaiming the word of God. However, after several days of this happening, Paul got annoyed and he turned to the woman and commanded the evil spirit to come out and it did immediately. Well, this posed a huge problem because Lydia's masters recognized that the hope of their games had vanished immediately. This woman was a slave and her masters made money off her demon possession by using her as a fortune teller. Their profits had just vanished the moment that Paul commanded the demon to leave her body. So these angry minions took Paul and Silas before the authorities and had them arrested. And Paul and Silas, they were beaten and their feet were placed 
in shackles. But the Bible says about midnight, Paul and Silas began to pray and began to sing songs to God. Now, I must admit, when I first read this passage, I began to say, God, how is it that one can praise you in a situation like this? I mean, after all, they had been arrested. They had been beaten. They had been placed. Shackles were placed on their foot. But yet, and still, they began to praise God even in the midst of where they were. And the Bible declares that as they began to pray and began to sing praises unto God, the prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly there was such a violent earthquake that the foundation of the prison were shaken. And at once all of the prison doors flew open and everybody's chains were loose. I submit to you on this morning that it is in the darkest place of your life where it seems that you have lost all hope when your back is against the wall that this is the time that God is looking for you and I to give him a praise. For we know that anybody can praise God when all is well, but can you praise God when you find your back against the wall? Can, can you praise him when there's no money in your bank account? Can you praise him when the doctors have turned away from you and shaking their head. Can you praise them when you can't trace them? Can you praise them when you've been wrongly accused? For the Bible declares that I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually hallelujah be in my mouth. Which leads me to my first point. You got to say something. 